So what's up to all my beautiful queens, the divas of a more mature age. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me here on my channel today. I am the Eva Monroe. If you're new to my channel, this area will look very foreign to you. You will be like, girl, where are you? Where is the fabric from your sewing room? Where's the garden? But if you've been here for a while, this will probably, this will be very nostalgic for you. You will definitely remember this. Y'all thought I got rid of it, huh? <laughs> I heard someone say, I didn't hear them say it. I read in someone's comments on a fragrance video. That's why Eva Monroe got rid of her entire collection. And I was like, and she did no such thing. <laughs> she would never. I just don't care as much anymore, okay? Um, so the name of this video is the 45th year of my life, right? And if you've been following me for a minute, for a while, you will know my jacket has this little snap on it. <laughs> And the snap keeps unsnapping, but I guess I can just leave it alone. I don't think y'all can see down there and it doesn't show anything anyway. Um, y'all know I was on a mission to, to find herself, right? And 2022 was honestly the best worst year of my life, right? The best worst year of my life. And there were so many things that I learned about myself. There were so many things I learned about other people. I learned how to do many things. I did things in 2022 and the beginning of 2023 that I never thought I could do. Like I dedicated myself to things. I basically locked myself in a room really for two years and, and basically in the beginning taught myself a skill that I never in a million years thought that I would learn to the degree that I have, right? So I say all the time, like, it is never too late. It's never too late. Um, 45 is, is according to probably like my children, it's ancient. <laughs> it's like up there in BC or something along those lines. But I feel like I'm just getting started. Like things are just getting started for me. Um, I said before, unfortunately, when you're you on that self journey and you learning things about yourself, unfortunately, you're going to get clarity about other situations and other people and other things. And sometimes the clarity is going to be great. It's going to be amazing, but sometimes not so much. And sometimes you have to do some some serious work. Um, you got to get into the filth of it all in order to, you know, clean it up and, and make it new and make it whole again, which was what my my journey of 45 consisted of. One thing I realized, I told my story on YouTube before. And I think actually it was like year before last that I decided that I would never tell that story again. And not because um, there was anything wrong with me telling my story, but I will never take the video down. It's always there. It's there always and forever. But it's my her story, right? It's who I was. It's what I went through. It made me the bad bia that I am today. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad to have went through and experienced all of the ish that I went through because uh, first of all, I'm still here. I'm still standing. And what would I be if I had not gone through all of those things? I know people who have never been through nothing, right? Never been through anything. And they ain't built like me. They ain't built like me. So, and getting ready to go into the 46th year of my life, the next time I tell a story, it, it'll be totally different. It'll be a totally different life story, vlog, blog about, you know, who I am and, and what I'm doing and where I came from, right? So... The one thing that I really wanted to work on in the 45th year of my life was my femininity. 
right? And if you're anywhere on TikTok, social media, wherever you are, I, did I mention my lapel mic is not working? So I'm, and I talk with my hands, so this is not the easiest thing I've ever had to hold on to. But I want you guys to hear me because the, the microphone on my camera is not that great. So everywhere on social media, there is all this stuff about becoming more feminine, right? You got Anna, Anna Bay. I love you, girl, but I'm over it. <laughs> I'm over it. Ladies, if you want to be more feminine, don't wear clunky shoes. Ladies, if you want to be more feminine, only wear teeny tiny little and it's like is that what femininity is or if you want to be more classy or if you want to be more and i've done these type of videos before i have i will i will cop to it coming and going however there are some things that can terribly class you down okay um and shoes and earrings, I guess, could be one of them or two of those things. But at the end of the day, let me tell you what classes you down and defeminizes you more than anything in this world. Not being authentic to yourself. Not, not living, not being your true authentic self. Not being true to yourself. Not being who you are because you can't be Anna Bay or the pink pill or you can't be any of those people. You cannot. And that's that's what I want women to understand. Like I see all this garbage on social media. Like and y'all know I hate social media. I hate social media. And to see me sitting here doing these videos and, and holding this microphone and in front of this camera, you will be like, girl, what I do, I hate social media. And that's why my presence is not as strong on it as it could be or should be. But it just, everybody wants to be the same person, right? Everybody wants to do the same thing, wear the same thing, eat the same way. If you look at TikTok videos and you see someone doing something or wearing something, everybody in the comments is like, give up the deets. Oh, I want to live like you. I want to be like you. I want to marry a rich man. I want to run off into the sunset. I don't want to have to go to work. I don't want to have to. Everybody wants to be the same person. Like who? I guess, it, is it AI? Like, with, with this whole AI thing, I mean, it, well, we're all going to be the same person. We're all going to be doing the same thing. You know, we're all going to be programmed and doing what the leaders want us to do. It's, it's, it's crazy to me, right? Be yourself. Do you. You know, I, I saw a video where someone said, you know, I went, so-and-so told me to go to a five-star restaurant at happy hour and eat something I've never eaten before and do something I, and I would meet someone and I would get some contact. You know, here's something I want y'all to understand. And but this is before I tell you about my, my, my femininity journey. Okay. Um, it takes a special kind of thing like either you got it or you ain't got it okay and a lot of times once we get to a certain stage in our life we ain't gonna get it okay <laughs> you ain't gonna get it um when you do things like that it's, it's always great to go to places you've never been to before and do things you've never done. But don't go with the intentions of looking to meet or looking to run into rich dudes. Because let me tell you something. When you go to a place that you've never been before, five-star restaurant, top of the tower, wherever it is you go, all the people that go there on a consistent basis know that you've never been there before. When you come stepping up in there in your Fashion Nova with your bad table manners. 
They know you ain't from around these parts. And they know, more so than anything, why you're there. Especially for happy hour. Especially for happy hour. So you got to be careful with these type of things. This stuff don't work for everybody, right? Take the bits of information that will work for you. But work on yourself. Like learn, you know, etiquette. Learn how to be polite in public. Learn how to be approachable. Things like that. Get you some table manners. Change up your wardrobe. Come up out of Fashion Nova. And those are things that I believe, you know, can, can take you to different levels in life. But there is no, no cookie cutter program because that's why I see sometimes you guys get mad when those said programs don't work for you. And then you're in the comments bashing the individual that sold you the course because it didn't work for you because it wasn't for you. Because let me tell you, amazing lesson number two I got when I turned 40. I, actually, I was about 40-ish. I turned 40 when I learned this thing right here. Everything ain't for me. Man, that thing was powerful. It'll be so powerful for so many women if they get this thing right here. Everything ain't for you. It ain't for you. Just because you see her wear it, it might not be for you. Just because she's driving it, that don't mean that it's for you. Just because she's doing it, it, it might not work for you. And as a grown but woman, learning that everything ain't for me, I learned how to fall into, into my groove, fall into my place, right? I know 8-inch stilettos ain't for me. They ain't for me no more. Platforms ain't for me. My mid-drift out in public, that ain't for me no more. And I'm fine with it. It might be for you, but it ain't for me. Like, I did a video and I talked about wearing Oxfords and someone was like, oh, that's so masculine looking at you. So, but that's okay, because stilettos ain't for me. They ain't for me no more. I know how to stay in my lane. I know what's for me and what ain't for me. And when you get that, and you can go out in public and you can be comfortable and you can be secure and okay with what's going on over here and in this skin. That is life, child. That's living. Okay? So, I just had to add that. But, so let's talk about my, my journey to femininity and me. How did I come to the conclusion of F femininity? <laughs> Femininity, okay. Um, I was in the Home Depot one day. I was walking in, and there was a lady walking in before me, and she was fancy, child. She was fancy. I saw her from the back, sister girl. She had her purse. Whenever me, whenever I see a woman carrying her purse on her forearm, and she got that arm tucked, honey, I know she fancy. I'm like, oh, you fancy, huh? <laughs> And she, most of us carry the bag by the handle. A lot of us sling it over the, you know, we cross body it, honey. If you carrying that bag like this, you probably got your nose in the air too. <laughs> and you, if you got that bag like, um, what's her name? I can't think, Aunt Esther. Then, you know, you got your business, child. But I saw her hair did, makeup did, everything. And she, I got in line after her. She was getting in line and she had one little flower. And whenever people have one little flower at the Home Depot, they always catch my attention because I'm like, what you going to do with that one little flower? Because I'm dragging the biggest orange cart they got and stuff is falling off of it. It's, it's covered in plants, maybe stacked with bags of soil or something, you know. So that always gets my attention. And I hear her telling the cashier lady that, oh, I have a pretty little pot that I'm going to put this in. Oh, I should probably get some dirt, huh? And the cashier lady says, yeah. She's like, well, where is it? And she's like, it's right over there in that green bag. And I said, ma'am, I said, you probably want to get the yellow bag because the green is garden soil. Get potting soil. You're going to need potting soil. So 
she goes over there and she's like oh I don't know if I'm gonna be able to I was like it's all right ma'am I'll get it I got it picked it up put it on the, put it in the cart for him and I told her I was joking with her I said now you're gonna want to change clothes before you embark upon this task right so I got to thinking about it and I told my friend I was talking to my friend I said you know what because uh, I was helping her, the cashier was helping her, everybody was just helping her, right? And me, I come in there and, and I just bulldoze my way through the store and I get what I need and ain't nobody helping me, you know, when I come in there behaving like that or, you know, and, and not even, I'm always very friendly, but I look like I know what I'm doing, right? <laughs> I'm typically the person that people will ask, excuse me, do you know where I'm like, I don't work here, but yeah, it's over on aisle so-and-so, right? But I tell my friend, I said, you know, I, I really wish like I was more like that sometimes, you know, like I really wish I was more dainty and more feminine. Like, um, my husband even like, asked me to do things you got one day my husband was trying to open something and he couldn't get it open and he literally handed it to me and was like here see if you can open this and I said here and I handed it back to him <laughs> I went and bought some palm tree a palm tree one day and I said, you know, I, I had to load it on the truck myself because the loaders, you know, they're, the loaders are always MIA at Home Depot, right? And that thing was heavy, child. They had just watered it. It was heavy. I strong-armed it on the truck. I got it home. I unloaded it. I, I went and got the dolly. I dollied it out back to the secret garden. And my husband came home and I asked him, I said, hey, could you dig a hole so we can put this in or whatever? And he did. And I said, oh, I wish I would have got three. I said, but man, that thing was heavy. And he picked it up. He said, oh, this thing ain't heavy. And I said, yes, yes, it is. He was like, this thing ain't heavy at all. And I was like, Damon, I am a girl. <laughs> I'm a girl, Damon. My husband's name ain't Damon, but if you get the joke, you know the joke. Damon, I am a boy. Um, I said, wow, is my husband... I even told my friend, I said, I think this man thinks I'm a dude sometimes. Like, right? But that's just me. That's my personality. That's that's how I do business, right? So I was trying the femininity thing and it just wasn't working for me. Because another thing that I discovered about myself at 45 is that I don't have time to pay people to waste my time, right? And and that's that's pertaining to things like the hairdresser, the nail shop, all of that type of stuff. Like I don't have to I'm gonna come in there, I gotta wait on you, I gotta spend two to four hours of my time, and I gotta pay you my money. You should be paying me. <laughs> my time time's like money right I ain't getting no younger time is something you can't get back I've learned I have no patience for that I go to the store I have something in my hand the it's seven people in the line I'm like I start reevaluating my whole situation I'm like all right girl you wanted this you didn't need it now you could lay it over there on the little thing and just go on about your business and leave here. Nobody will ever know you were the one that put it there because it belongs back in the freezer section. You lay it down and get up out of here because you don't have time for this. Like I have zero patience for that. Zero patience. So I come to the conclusion one day that I'm not feminine and it's okay with me. Okay, Anna Bay, I'm not feminine. I want to be more feminine, but I like clunky shoes. 
<laughs> okay, I like clunky shoes. I like my my earrings and, and my necklace don't always make sense. Now, most of the time I do wear a nice dainty pair of studs with a nice dainty gold chain, but that's not always my story. I'm a little rough around the edges, but I'm very self-sufficient. I know how to get ish done. I know how to make things better. That's what I do. I make things better, right? Um, I can build stuff. I can make stuff. I can make stuff beautiful. I, I can, uh, I can make people beautiful. <laughs> Everything I touch, I make it better, but I'm not feminine and that's okay. And that's why I came up with the slogan. I don't have to be feminine. I'm her. Who is her? I'm that Bia, right? I'm her. I don't have to be feminine. I don't have to be ultra feminine. There are feminine ways about me. I will put on a dress. I clean up very nice, honey. And when I clean up a dress or when I put on a dress, when I put on a dress, I look like a woman. I'm a woman. I'm a beautiful woman. I'm a smart woman. I carry myself well. I have good table manners. There is a very elegant side to me. I know how to chew with my mouth closed. I know how to behave in public because that's the one thing that I notice that makes a lot of women not as desirable as they would like to be is that you don't know how to behave in public. Few people do these days though, right? Um, because no, nobody has respect for anybody these days. Everybody is all about me, 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 and F you. And that's everybody's attitude when you go out in public these days. And I think it's the worst thing ever. And it's the reason why I thoroughly enjoy being at home. It's hard to get me to go out. And I'll, I'll say I'm going all the way up until the day. And then I'll be like, mm, I don't really feel like it. <laughs> so this thing happened to me right this is a major epiphany that I had um I spoke about the relationship thing in my last talk video right now I stopped doing talk videos because I don't know what I'm supposed to say and what I'm not supposed to say anymore I was watching this video of this girl she was talking about somebody who's no longer with us and she just kept saying unalive and I was like why does she keep saying this she was like and they unalive and the unalive and the un and I'm like why did why is she saying girl you sound crazy only to realize that you can't say the d word on social media anymore you can't say the k word you can't say you can't say crazy on social media anymore which is I say crazy all the time I'll be like girl I'm so crazy you didn't know I was crazy Guys, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Everybody's so hypersensitive about everything and things that I would normally talk about. I have to proceed with caution, right? Because everybody is so hypersensitive. But so I talked about my relationship, right? And I was like, yeah, you know, I'm here. We're here. And everybody was like, uh-oh. <laughs> uh-oh. You know, even him. Uh-oh. Even though he, a long time before y'all saw that video, he was like, uh-oh. <laughs> um, I woke up one day and I said this thing to myself. I said, girl, shut up. <laughs> Can we say that on social media? I don't know. Shut up. Shut up. Because you know what came to me the night before? Some things that I have read. Right? Because y'all know I'm a reader. I'll read it. So I don't care what. Some things I have read. Don't ask people for what you need over and over and over again. Don't do that. You sound like the fool. Maybe twice. Okay. Anything more than that, you sound like a broken record. 
and you're irritating them. You're like a little fly, buzz, 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 right? Maybe twice, because some people forget stuff, you know? Hey, this is what I need. And then the other thing said, do you get you right? Become everything that you need to be. And the things that are not supposed to be a part of your life, the things that aren't supposed to be around you, in you, on you, through you, to you, ain't for you, will just fade away. They'll fade away. And that's what I did. I shut up, child. I shut up. I didn't say anything. And people were overly concerned. They were like, I was nice. I was considerate. I was calm. I was doing everything I was supposed to be doing. Because I the, here's why I love my friends, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a friend... And her husband, just like everybody else's husband, don't always be doing the right thing. Okay? Because y'all not going to sit here and convince me that husbands be husband in the way they supposed to be husband in most of the time. Most of them don't. Okay? They, they But he don't, he don't be doing the right thing. And she's always so peaceful about it. And she's calm. And would share things that sometimes I would be like, think girl, if I would bust his head to the white meat. <laughs> girl, get rid of him. You know, hire some help. Get rid of him. You know. But she's like, you know, oh, I'm I'm on a spiritual journey. You know, I'm doing me. Now that don't mean because I know somebody is going to be in the comments like, no, you don't let nobody walk all over the top of you and da 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 da. No, absolutely you don't. And there's always boundaries. One must always have boundaries and, and, and limitations and oh no, the hell you won't, right? It's not about letting somebody walk all over the top of you. But what I found was that when you are working on becoming a more peaceful version of yourself, a better version of yourself, when you are working on healing and, and the, the thing and finding your thing and leaving other people alone and, and all of that type of stuff, you don't even see some things as issues. Honestly, you don't. You just, you you learn how to just let people be who they be and let them do what they do because at the end of the day I tell I tell women this all the time like if you're not going anywhere shut up right if you're not willing to to do anything to change the situation first of all if you didn't set the boundaries in the beginning because you got to set the boundaries from day one right Cause it's just like me with my husband. Yeah, yeah, you gonna come into the relationship mowing the grass and and helping me build houses and buildings and and work on projects. And now you like, uh, uh I want to carry my purse on my forearm. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be a little hard to teach the old dog new tricks, right? It really is. But when you're in a different place and a different space. You, you can't even be bothered by some things that, that you would have previously been bothered by, right? Like I said, I know that I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing, right? And not another issue that has previously been addressed. Not another issue will ever be addressed ever again that we've already previously addressed. The only way that it will ever be addressed again is when you are exiting center stage left or when I'm exiting center stage left and you say why? Where? Why? Justine, Justine, why? <laughs> and then I could say, well, you know, you remember. 
what's that old saying like no sense in beating a dead horse right it doesn't even wear on the other person that's the thing about it it doesn't when you're constantly asking for what you need what you want talking about how you feel this is what i you not da 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 da, da. the other person is like zoop zoop they don't hear you they haven't thus far and they will not hear you but what it does is it starts to wear on you it begins to tear down you it begins to make you angry you begin to feel resent you know it it messes it, it it's you it it doesn't it doesn't really even affect the other person in any form or fashion it's it's you you know you feel that thing and so that's the reason why I started saying to myself like if it's a situation that you're not willing to change you ain't ready to change it stop talking about it because what's that what do they say don't talk about it be about it because talking talk is cheap child it's cheap it doesn't even matter we can threaten these dudes as many times you can threaten them you know <sighs> It doesn't do any good. It you are the one. You take the beat down from all of that. So I spoke about this was probably So I spoke about 2022 being the best worst year of my life. Um I think that it was the best year of my life because it was so full of family, right? But family also helped it be the worst year of my life as well <laughs> family had something to do with it being the slash worst year of my life right so i spoke about a situation and i, and I talked about how you know there are other characters in your story and just because you've healed and you've gone on and you've done things different, that doesn't necessarily mean that the other people that were a part of your story did, right? In 2022, I never, I never planned to talk about this on um, social media online, but, and I'm honestly, I'm not going to go in depth with it about this situation here because there is honestly, there is like an entire story that needs to be told here, right? And it, and it will get told, but I am trying to decide like the most, I think that it will be actually a membership type situation, a, a small tidy group type setting that I will tell this story because I feel like a lot of women could benefit from this story honestly in 2022 i found out i was going to be a grandmother at the beginning of 2022 because if you follow my journey my story you know that i have a daughter and i have a son um my daughter was pregnant and in the midst of all this stuff i found out one of the worst things that i have ever heard in in my life honestly ever in my life it was disclosed to me that when my daughter turned 18 her stepmother don't care what you like to be called and what you don't want to be called you are you're her stepmother legally adopted her and nobody they, they felt close enough. They felt, you know, that she legally adopted her. And this was disclosed to me by the stepmother. Needless to say, it was four years after the fact. And her reason was because if anything ever happened, she didn't want to feel as if she was just pushed to the side. Which was something that I never, I had never done. Never. You know, I had ne I never, I never tried to get in the middle of that. I think when I was about probably, I think my daughter was probably one. And I, I came to the conclusion that I'm like, okay, girl, stop fighting this. 
you know, with a child with two mothers, you know, wow, that's a mate. Two people who love her and will go to war for her and would do anything for her. And, and she's got her father. And then I was married to my ex-husband. She's got a stepfather. This is the luckiest child in the world. What are you fighting? I even sat down and wrote the woman a thank you. Thank you for everything you've ever done. Thank you for caring. Thank you for being there. I appreciate it. I know things haven't always been the best between us. I know I slept with your man and got a baby. And I'm sorry for that, but thank you. You know, and the situation, as I've talked about before, has just been weird from the word go, right? From, from that very moment. But when I tell you about something that shook my world, you have no idea what that thing did to me when I heard that woman tell me 10 times, Eve, I have something to tell you and I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm not trying to hurt you. Anytime anybody does that, I'm telling you, just hang the phone up, child. Because they getting ready to hit you in your throat, make your teeth click. Hang the phone up. You don't want it. Because <laughs> to hear that, and I'm like thinking to myself, now if something happens to my child, like I got to stand beside this woman while she makes all the decisions? What? Nobody thinks that this is crazy. And then, you know, I'm calling dad and I'm like, hey, dude, what the hell is wrong with you? And he said, I thought it was a joke. I didn't think they were going to do it at all. Man, listen, that thing right there broke me. That thing took me down. I'm just going to be perfectly honest about that. Like, I was like, what? Baby shower day came. I said I wasn't going, but I swallowed my pride. I put my big girl panties on and I went up in there like the gangster I am. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Hey, hey. Because that's how I do business. But then after baby shower day, well, things fell apart again. You know, over me not giving in to what they wanted me to give in to. You know, 2022, the 45th year of my life, I said, I'm not going to be a doormat for anybody. I don't care if it's my children, my husband, my best friend, my mama, my... I'm not going to be nobody's doormat, right? I'm going to have boundaries and limits, limitations for everybody. If it don't make me feel good, if it's not the moment in which I want to do it, if it's not the thing I want to do, I ain't doing it. If it's not who I want to be in them, I ain't being it. Because I'm telling you, sometimes it will be your children that will just... Try to make you feel like, you know, yeah, I tell them all, I was shit. People ask me this. What's, do you have any regrets? Like, what's the biggest regret in your life? What is that? Motherhood. Like, if I could go back, if I could wipe that and go back and do that thing again, man, I definitely would. But the one thing that I can tell you that I know to be true, I know this for certain. is that my children had what they needed when they needed it, however they needed it. I can honestly say that. They had what they needed. They didn't, they don't, they know my children didn't know what it was to want to go to the can can dance where you could bring a can of food or a dollar and I didn't have neither one. My children didn't know that. They didn't know that. They didn't know what it was to go to the book fair and watch all the other kids buy books and you just window shopping in the library because you know you ain't getting no damn books. My children never knew that. They never went to bed hungry. They never needed to make a phone call and we didn't have a phone in the house. They never needed to go somewhere and we didn't have a car. They never woke up and we didn't have lights, gas, or water. They don't know that struggle. 
and maybe that's what's wrong with them <laughs> they don't know that you know they ain't never known me to be high drunk off my behind they don't know that life you know but again I say that it's, it's really something that I want to break down in depth but it ain't for everybody so y'all y'all help me figure out a good way to to chop it up about this because at the end of the day it's like it's 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 like that blended family type thing you know that that um stepmother stepfather type thing that or maybe the baby mama baby daddy side chick situation that you know um I don't know it's crazy but there it's really something that I want to talk about but at the end of the day I want to say this that I feel so blessed right now and I feel so full and I'm happy and I you know when I first started I, I first released my very first set of clothes I said I wanted to do it once a month and then someone was like oh that's crazy and as I started to work on it for the next month I was like oh yeah this is crazy and so someone was like do it twice a year and I said okay and so now what I'm finishing up on is my fall collection for this year that I'm gonna release this year it is IMO so damn dope it is it is everything that I never would have thought that it would be and so I'm gonna be really excited to share it with you all coming up but I think that if I could give any woman who's 45 and under or hell over for that matter any one piece of advice it is always be true to yourself first and foremost be you Cause it's hard as hell to be anybody other than you. Like you can't, you can't be anybody else. It's not possible. You can only be you, but while you're being you in the process of being you, you be the best damn you that you could possibly be. So thank you so much for listening to me today until I see you in my next video. Sewing, be blessed and bye for now.